What's up guys, this is the Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Ed Brown Evo KC9 1911. Before I do that, I wanna mention my Patreon supporters, thank you guys very much. It's because of you, the channel still exists. Through all my trying times, you guys stood next to me and I appreciate that, and because of that, we do Patreon-only exclusive content, and because of that, your questions get answered first, so if you ever need anything, feel free to direct message me. Also want to mention a local homeless shelter in the description below. Those kids could really use your support. Back to the Ed Brown Evo KC9. Now the Evo series is a new series from Ed Brown, but they've got a lot of new offerings out that have really interested me in the past few months, particularly the KC9. Now this is one of the ones I wanted to get my hands on the most, maybe the one I wanted to get my hands on the most. And I actually requested this firearm for, from them and they sent this over to me in the actual spec that I would have if I would have purchased it. So I'm probably gonna be a little biased because this has all the features on it if I would have ordered it custom. So it kind of came to me exactly how I would like it and it'll come to you exactly how you like it if you choose to buy it. That's one of the benefits of buying a custom handgun. Now the Ed Brown Evo 1911 is in fact a 1911. So it is going to be a single stack magazine with a manual safety and a single action style trigger. There's good and bad to that. We'll talk about both. Now, I like 1911s in 9mm, and people think that's blasphemous, and, and you can think whatever you want, but I'm a big fan of the 9mm caliber, and it is cheap, reliable, and effective, and not only that, you get a couple extra rounds in the magazine, and for a 1911, that actually matters a lot. So instead of your standard 7-8 round magazine capacity, you get 9 or 10 plus 1 in the tube, and that makes 10 or 11, whichever magazine you choose. On top of that, you are going to get the single action trigger, which matters a lot to me, I'll be honest. The 1911 has the best trigger on the market. 1911-2011, basically the same gun, double stack versus single stack. The trigger on a 1911 cannot be oversold. It is really impressive. Take a look at this trigger right here. That's about as good as you can get. Not only do you have that crisp two to three pound single action break, but then you have a positive reset that is very, very short, followed up by repeat shots. So those 11 shots or 10 shots that you get out of this gun are gonna be put exactly where you aim. And under stress, having a good, easy trigger to use, in my opinion, matters a great deal, at least to me. And that's one of the reasons why I took this through the FBI qualification test and I passed with 100%. So I feel very comfortable carrying this gun. And in fact, it is one of the guns that I actually do carry. And I do carry it with a T-Rex arm sidecar holster. If I'm gonna carry appendix, I like to carry something like a PO7 or a 1911, something that has a little bit extra uh, safety to it. Now you gotta remember when you're appendix carrying, it's not pointed right at your junk. It's actually not pointed at anything unless you move around a little bit. And on top of that, the trigger guard is covered. On top of that, with a single action pistol, you're gonna get that manual safety. And on a custom gun like this, it's gonna be extremely positive and extremely tactile, so you're gonna know when it goes on and off. And on top of that, with a 1911, you also get a grip safety. That is a lot of layers of protection that makes me feel very comfortable carrying in that manner. There's advantages and disadvantages to every way to carry. I mean, you could say there's nothing bad about small in the back until you fall down and break your spine. And there's nothing bad about uh, three o'clock or four o'clock until you're pinned on the ground and somebody's beating on you and you can't get your gun out. So there's advantages and disadvantages to every type of carry. Carry how you wish. Believe me, I carry a, di a couple of different ways. I carry appendix, I carry uh, five o'clock, and I also pocket carry on occasion, depending on what situation dictates. I even ankle carried a couple of times in the past although I'm not a real big fan of that. We're gonna have the four inch slide, which is not a four and a half, it's actually a four inch slide. So you're gonna get essentially the dimensions of a Glock 19 sort of. So a commander size frame uh, with full capacity of a 1911 and then a shorter slide, which actually makes it uh, reciprocate a little bit faster and makes the gun actually faster overall. I was very impressed about how this gun handled. All right, so I think we should do some speed stuff before we move back and we'll do a little one take plate rack. If I mess it up, I mess it up. You know when? Yep. Pretty fast for an old gun. They were so shocked. 
It's got that tri-top reduced slide that Ed Brown, uh, the Evo series is known for, which I like a lot as well. You can see it's almost flush with the frame right there making it a very thin and a very capable uh, gun and a very comfortable gun to carry overall. It has these more minuscule slide serrations, which I actually kind of thought, you know, I was indifferent about originally until I started using them, and they are very, very functional. So overall, I think it was an excellent choice doing them like that. And as you can see there, we have the fluted recess crown bull barrel, which looks a lot sweeter when it's not dirty, but hey, I use my guns. This channel actually shoots a thousand rounds when I do a thousand round review. I don't just say it like some other channels. So the gun's gonna be a little bit dirty. And I think what we'll do, we did a takedown video on this on GunStreamer if you guys wanna take a look because bull barrel 1911s come apart just a little bit different. If you wanna see a cleaning video, I'll probably put one up on Patreon at some point. Uh, YouTube doesn't like stuff like that. It also has the fish scale serrations on here, these super cool grips, which I'm a really, really big fan of. It's got the bobtail grip, which helps in concealment when you're carrying, which I really like because it still feels like a full grip, but it really does help uh, that little hump there that shows on your t-shirt a great deal. The grip safety has a memory pad on it, which I'm a big fan of. I don't carry 1911s that don't have the big grip safety because I do think the grip safety uh, is pretty antiquated, and I think that if I could choose to delete it, I probably would, and I have on uh, some of my 1911s already. This is an Atlas Hyperion. Magazine release works very well, and even with the flush fit magazine, uh, as you can see if you take a look at the FBI video, it works very well. I reloaded very quickly from uh, under stress, but I would recommend probably Ed Brown makes these with uh, plastic base plates as well. You're probably gonna get a little bit better and a little bit more positive reload uh, if you use that as your spare magazine and then use the flush mag to carry. That's the system that I currently use. It also comes with blacked out rear and front fiber optic. I chose this sighting setup and it's got the U-notch as well, making it very fast up close and still very accurate at distance. If you choose to go that route. I didn't get the ambi safety. You can get one of those if you want. I like the single-sided safety for carry. Uh, even if I do decide to switch hands, I don't need to turn on and off the manual safety. And if I absolutely have to, you can easily turn it off with your left hand. So not a big deal there. It also has the tactical notch to run off your big toe if you need that. It has the uh, medium size trigger. I actually am a really big fan of that. I, you think with big hands I would like the long trigger. However, I found that the longer the trigger gets, the harder it is to get in the trigger guard quickly and you can create some negligent discharges. So overall still has a significantly longer trigger reach for me than your average Glock. Now we'll get into the reliability of the firearm. I shot 1,000 rounds for this gun and had a whole lot of fun doing it with zero malfunctions and I expected that. If you pay for a custom 1911, I know most people pay for accuracy and pay for looks, but I will not carry a gun that doesn't do 100% perfect reliability with a multitude of different ammos. Because I carry this gun, it got a little bit more uh, stress than some other guns do, and it got a whole bunch of ammo. It got 115 Seller and Bellet, 124 Seller and Bellet, 115 Phoenix, 124 Phoenix, 147 Phoenix. Uh, it got two of my different carry ammo types. It got some uh, Winchester, uh, like PDX Defender, I think is what it is, and then uh, Critical Defense, 115 grain, and Critical Duty. And all of those ammos, it ran really, really well. I even ran some of that uh, polymer uh, frangible ammo and I will be running some uh, pine frangible ammo as well through it in the future because this is just a bump in the road for the KC9 testing. I'm probably gonna do a 2,000 round review as well. I'm gonna start doing uh, large round updates for guns that I really like, like the 34, the Hyperion, and uh, stuff like that because why not just shoot it more? They're so much fun. So overall, it was extremely reliable, and uh, now one thing you're going to have to remember with the 1911 is you're going to have to clean it and lube it just a little bit more than you would a Glock or an M&P. I hope you know that if you're carrying a 1911, it's not going to be as durable to the elements as something like a Glock because the, to the tolerance are tighter. That's why you get those super smooth slide and that super extreme accuracy, and guns like this are guaranteed to be like 3 MOA or 3 inches at 50 yards. So you're going to get some extreme accuracy with this gun, and the trade-off to that is you're gonna have to give it a little bit of CLP uh, a little bit more often than just once every thousand rounds like I tend to do a Glock. I usually lube a 1911 about every 500 and I usually clean it about every 2,000. Now along with that four inch barrel, it does have a 32 ounce overall weight because this is in fact a steel frame. I forgot to mention that. Now, 
steel frame uh, 1911s like this Wilson Combat here that is a full size is running about 42 ounces. However, with the lightened slide and the four inch slide and the bobtail, you're even though you have a steel frame, it's only running about 31, 32 ounces. So it's 10 ounces lighter than your standard 1911. However, it handles extremely well. As you can see in the shooting footage, I had no problem shooting this really quickly. Now, obviously the accuracy isn't gonna be quite as good with the iron sights as you're going to get with a red dot. So when I shot the, uh, the original Evo that I reviewed a few months ago that actually had a red dot mount on it. I was able to get a hair more accuracy out of that at distance than I was this. However, iron sights are something that I've shot my whole life, particularly iron sights on a 1911. So if I were in a concealed carry situation, I would really, really prefer the old comfortable standard iron sights, which is why I chose them on this. One more time. Now, not only is it very shootable because of that super fast trigger and that light and slide, but these fish scale serrations aren't just for looks. They actually grip your hand very well, and that extra weight on the frame and less weight on the slide actually creates a very smooth recoiling system overall. Guys like Ken Hackathorn also agree that the uh, shorter uh, slides on a 9mm actually function a little bit better, not only more reliable, but they're also a little bit quicker overall. Four inches actually going to come out of here quicker out of the holster as well, although I don't think you're going to notice that. The gun comes with a lot of other standard custom features that you're going to have as well. Not only does it have the awesome trigger, but it's going to come with a flat wire spring. Obviously, that bull barrel is worth the price of admission. And on top of that, you're going to get an external extractor. Now, overall, we shot a thousand rounds through this and a little more extreme than we normally do. A lot of this was from the holster. A lot of this was with some carry ammunition. And again, I was very impressed overall. And I should be because I keep mentioning that it's a custom gun, but I keep uh, avoiding the price because I like to give the price at the end and compared to something like these two It's actually relatively cheap uh, Considering that you get all the features on this gun that you do on this and honestly I've got a ton of rounds through each one of these and other than the four inch to the five inch It's actually hard to tell the difference this gun comes in at right around three thousand dollars And it's just as reliable and just as accurate as the Ed Brown which comes in at two thousand dollars now two thousand dollars Don't get me wrong is nothing to sneeze at however for a full custom gun uh, from a company like Ed Brown and having that guaranteed reliability and accuracy but you have to make that decision yourself whether or not you want to go with something extremely accurate but missing some capacity and that price tag again is nothing to sneeze at but you have to remember that it's two-thirds the rest of its competition which it's on par with uh, guns like Nighthawk or even less bear so overall I think it's a pretty good value I think with the features that you get on it there's no way that you can get uh, a gun like this for any less uh, a company that I would consider coming in a little bit lower tier than this is gonna be Dan West and again, another company that I absolutely swear by. One of the reasons why I like Dan Wesson and Ed Brown so much is because you get the quality, reliability, features, and looks of something like a Wilson Combat, but you can still buy a couple of crates of ammunition if you go with something like Ed Brown. So overall, I think it's an excellent gun, but again, I'm fairly biased because 9mm 1911s are my favorite gun, which is why you see them on the channel so much. I think they have a lot of applications in the real world concealed carry setting, maybe not so much in something like law enforcement or military, but for a good old civilian like me, it works great, and I would have no issues choosing this to defend myself or my family. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help at your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.